Psychologists define learning as a long-lasting change in behavior as a result of experience. Classical and operant conditioning both lead to learning. So what's the difference between them? Classical conditioning was first described by Ivan Pavlov and is the association of a stimulus with an involuntary response. It focuses on involuntary automatic behaviors. Pavlov noticed that a neutral stimulus before a reflex causes an association. He conducted an experiment in which he rang a bell before presenting dogs with food. When dogs see or smell food, they salivate, even though it is not a learned behavior. Rather, their salivating is an unconditioned response to seeing food, which is an unconditioned stimulus. Of course, a dog would not normally salivate in response to a random stimulus like a bell ringing, since such an event is a neutral stimulus. However, Pavlov found that if he always rang a bell before presenting dogs with food, then they eventually began to salivate as soon as they heard the bell, even when there was no food around. At this point, the bell had become a conditioned stimulus, and the dog salivating to its sound was a conditioned response. Operant conditioning, first described by B.F. Skinner, is the association of a voluntary behavior with a consequence. Skinner found three types of environmental responses, or operants, that can follow a behavior. Reinforcers, punishers, and neutral operants. Reinforcers increase the probability of a behavior recurring. Punishers decrease the probability, or extinguish the behavior, and neutral operants do neither. To demonstrate positive reinforcement, Skinner put a rat in a box with a lever. On accidentally bumping the lever, the rat discovered that it would receive a food pellet. With this positive reinforcement, the rat learned to keep pressing the lever. Negative reinforcers remove unpleasant stimuli. To demonstrate negative reinforcers, Skinner put a rat in a box which had a mild electric current that caused the rat discomfort. On wandering around the box, the rat randomly hit a lever to turn the current off. When exposed to the electric current in the box, the rat learned to always press the lever, something called escape learning. Similarly, Skinner eventually also taught the rat to flip a switch that prevented the electric current from being turned on in the first place, something called avoidance learning. Punishment weakens a behavior by linking it to an aversive consequence. Just like reinforcement, it can occur through the addition or removal of a stimulus. For example, if a rat receives an electric shock when it pushes a button, it will avoid that button. Or, if you're an unfortunate raccoon that decides to wash his cotton candy before eating it, only to watch it dissolve before your very eyes, that is punishment through the removal of a positive stimulus. It should be noted that punished behavior is not forgotten, but is suppressed. If a punishment is no longer present, the behavior returns. Also, unlike reinforcement, it does not guide towards the desired behavior, but only suppresses undesired behavior. There have been further experiments done with rats in the Skinner box. After a rat has received operant learning and has learned to press a lever to receive a food pellet, what happens if the lever is pressed but no food pellet is received? At first, the rat will keep pressing the lever, but eventually it will stop, and the behavior will be extinguished. Why press this thing without payment? However, a rat can learn or unlearn a behavior at different rates with different schedules of reinforcement. This has been termed the response rate, the rate at which behavior repeats, and the extinction rate, how soon the behavior stops. Let's see what happens with five different reinforcement schedules. With continuous reinforcement, the response rate is slow and extinction is fast. With a fixed ratio reinforcement schedule, where positive reinforcement is offered after a fixed number of repetitions of a behavior, the response rate is fast and extinction is medium. For a fixed interval reinforcement schedule, where positive reinforcement is provided as long as a quota is fulfilled within a given time schedule, the response and extinction rates are medium. And for a variable ratio reinforcement schedule, where positive reinforcement is given after an unpredictable number of repetitions, the response rate was fast and extinction was slow. This is the equivalent of gambling. For a variable interval reinforcement schedule, where a reward is given if a quota is fulfilled within an unpredictable amount of time, the response rate is again fast and extinction is slow. If you like this video, like and subscribe. You can also support me by following the link to my Patreon. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment.